scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. I want to charge our hearts tonight on a subject that is very personal to me because it it's an attempt teaching what I'm teaching tonight is like telling the story of my life teaching what I want to teach you tonight is like telling you the story of any and every man who has truly been lifted by God and for me um, as I look through my notes while we were coming it occurred to me again how faithful and how good God has been to me and to everyone who cares to be discerning and thoughtful enough. And so I want you to please pay attention as we discuss wherever we stop tonight to God be the glory. Hallelujah. I'm teaching on a subject that I title Lifted by Grace. Please, I want you to pay attention. Lifted by Grace. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 12, please. We'll read from verse 8 and 9. 2 Corinthians 12, 8 and 9. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me, the thorn in Paul's flesh. And his response, God's response was very interesting. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you i want us to stop there my grace is sufficient for you a man comes to god and cries concerning his inabilities concerning his vulnerabilities concerning his inadequacies and god's answer to such a man is my grace is sufficient for you help us in the name of jesus christ in 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 2, let's read down to 4, 2 Peter chapter 1, 2 to 4. The Bible says, grace and peace is multiplied to you in the knowledge, be multiplied to you in the knowledge of our God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're reading to verse 4. It says, as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who has called us by glory and virtue, it says, okay, well, you're reading New King James. If we can have King James, that's fine. It says, whereby we've been given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. It says, that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. At the back of every extraordinary life in the kingdom, at the back of every extraordinary um, achievement for want of word is the grace of God like pastor rightly said in this kingdom we are made by grace we are lifted by grace and it is important that we understand the grace of God alongside the dynamics of the supply of that grace hallelujah for everyone you have celebrated, for everyone you have admired, for everyone in the kingdom whose life has inspired you to any degree, 
I am telling you categorically that behind such phenomenal strides is the grace of God. And it's important for us to come to terms with that because trying to achieve results that only come by grace without grace will frustrate you. Results in this kingdom are purely a function of grace. Hallelujah. This is very, very important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5, I love what the Bible says, 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 5. Please give it to us. The Bible says, not that we are sufficient. Is that in your Bible? Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. It says, but our sufficiency is of God. Verse 6. It says, who hath made us able. The word able there means qualified. The word able there is the same word sufficient. That means the capacity to rise to the occasion. Our supposed qualification, our sense of merit is derived from this grace that has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter but of the spirit. The Bible says for the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. What then is grace? As as popular as this word sounds across the body of Christ, you will be amazed to understand that very, very few people, respectfully speaking, have the slightest idea about the concept of grace nor the administration, God's system for administering grace. So we talk about grace all the time across the body of Christ, but very few people really understand the concept nor the system of its administration. This is the reason why, in spite of the fact that we talk a lot about grace, the results do not show that there is a supply of grace in our lives. Are we together? What then is grace? Years ago when I took time to study this subject, I was surprised how difficult it was to define grace. It sounds very easy, but when you dig deep with thoughtfulness, if you really understand what you are saying, you should be at a loss as to being able to capture in English the kind of definition that would best express the concept of grace. And so in the place of prayer, I found a definition that I felt would bless me and that people would be able to relate to. And I found that in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Let's read together if you can see it projected. Ready? One to read. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Say blessed. Say spiritual blessings. One more time. Say blessed. Say all spiritual blessings. This for me is the most concise capture of the word grace. Because any other attempt to define grace will only mean that you will have to compartmentalize grace. And while it is true that grace is manifold and multidimensional, the Bible here says God hath blessed us. And he says he blessed us with all spiritual blessings. So my definition of grace is all spiritual blessings. All spiritual blessings that have been given to the believer to produce a life of victory. But it is accessed only through the office and the person of the Christ. All spiritual blessings made available to the believer for a victorious life. But then it is accessed only through the office of the Christ. This is my definition of grace. 
So grace is not just limited to sufficiency. It is not just limited to favor. It is not just limited to access. It is all encompassing. That means every spiritual blessing. Please look up. Every advantage that has been provided for, for the believer that can become an instrument of victory in your life is called grace. Every. That means power is grace. Wisdom is grace. Faith is grace. Provided it sustains the ability to translate to your victory and it is only routed through the office of the Christ, it is called grace. If you do not have to consult the office of the Christ to access it, it is not grace. For it to be called grace, the office of the Christ must become the principal center point of administration. That means if you route that ability through another medium other than the Christ, it may be ability, but it is not called grace. It matters that it passes through the office of the Christ to be called grace. Are we together now? So if I see you displaying a semblance of wisdom, before we call that wisdom grace, we will have to vet whether that wisdom passed through the office of the Christ. And there is one litmus test. If it passes through the office of the Christ, then you are saddled with the responsibility of using it for your profiting, but to reveal Christ. So if we do not find the revelation of Christ captured in your display of spiritual abilities, we have a right to vet the source. It is not grace. Are we together now? It's important for us to have this frame of thinking. Again, let me repeat that when it is the grace of God, it generically refers to every spiritual blessing made available to the believer but routed through the person and the office of the Christ. Hallelujah. So if you go to a herbalist and you access power, that is not called grace because the Christ factor is ignored in that process. Are we together? In fact, if your sufficiency comes from yourself, it does not matter the result it produces. It is not called grace. The moment Christ has to be isolated from that process, it no longer is called grace. Are we together? It is not the workability of the ability that makes it grace. It is the, the Christocentric character. The fact that Christ is not alienated from that process. That is what makes it grace. Are we together now? This is very, very important because there are many believers who deal with the subject of grace in isolation to the person and the office of the Christ. So we see grace like an anointing that is independent of Christ. I can access it. It doesn't matter whether I have a relationship with God or not. If the anointing is in a bottle of oil, whether Christ is represented or not, once I can pour it on my head and it commands some possibilities in my life, they say, I am walking in grace. No. No. If Christ is not captured in that process and if it does not lead to the ultimate revelation of the Christ, it is not grace. Are we together? This is very important. For tonight, you know by now, like I heard your pastor say, that grace in its operation is manifold. Manifold means multifaceted, multidimensional. But for tonight, I want to deal with two dimensions of grace for our discussion tonight. And I pray in the name of Jesus that God will open our eyes to see. In the name of Jesus. I think I have said it in this church that in fact, there is an anointing that we call an engracing of God that has the responsibility to cause the eyes of men to see. When it has to do with the exegesis of scripture, you will need more than intellect to understand spiritual things. The Bible says the words of the vision has become like the pages of a book that is sealed. And they gave to one who is learned and said, take, read. 
and he said, I cannot because it is sealed. And they gave to one who is unlearned, and he said, I cannot because I'm not even learned. So both the learned and the unlearned, when they come to the presence of God, you see, the book can be opened, but it is still sealed. It is unlocked. It takes the spirit of God to open it. Are we together now? And so Paul was speaking in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9. He talked about this grace that can make all men see. To make all men see. All men, educated or uneducated, young or old, when you are under the atmosphere of that grace, it is able to manipulate your understanding until you comprehend what the Spirit is saying. No matter how difficult, no matter the intellectual component behind it, he is able to speak through the speaker and cause you to understand. The first dimension of grace that we see from scripture and represents our interest tonight is what we call saving grace. Please write. Saving grace. Titus chapter 2 and verse 1. The Bible calls it the grace that bringeth salvation. Titus 2, 1. Did I get that right? Please help me. Find that scripture for me. The grace that bring it. Is it 11? 2.11 please. My apologies. 2.11. Titus 2.11. Thank you. It says for the grace of God that bring it salvation. So there is a grace that brings salvation. And the Bible says because it is responsible for salvation. It appears to all men. It didn't say it appears to interested men. Because of God's determination to see that all men be saved, he has so lavishly made this grace available and with it the capacity to be saved. So that no one is with an excuse. Are we together? So there is saving grace. Now please look up. Then the character and the operation of this dimension of grace is that you do not have the power. Watch this now. That, that that grace is captured in a message. The Bible calls it the report. Who shall believe our report? He said, who shall believe this report? There is a report that you believe. The substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And if you believe that report, are we together? The Bible says, by confessing the Lordship of Jesus according to Romans chapter 10, from verse 8 to 10 that if you believe with your heart that God raised him from the dead Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 to 10 and you confess with your mouth you shall be saved for with the heart man believes the Bible says and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation so the administration of that grace is that you do not do anything. Your assignment is to believe. Are we together now? To believe with your heart and then verbalize that belief through your confession. And that the moment you subscribe to this pattern, that grace comes administering the life of God to you. Are we together now? Yes. So it is safe to say that grace demands no effort as it were on your own part. Everything was done by Jesus Christ on the cross. Your assignment is to believe that report and to receive Jesus by faith in your heart, confessing him with your mouth. And the whole software, if I would use that word, is implanted in your spirit with no effort whatsoever on your own part. This is the grace that appears unto all. And if you are saved here, and you can verify whether you are saved by finding out if you subscribe to this pattern. If you did not believe Jesus with your heart and confessed him with your mouth, you are not saved. Even if you confess with your mouth and you did not believe in your heart, you are still not saved. The law of administering salvation demands that you must believe with your heart and then to confess with your mouth the Lordship of Jesus. Hallelujah. The second dimension of grace that we'll consider tonight is called enabling grace. Please write it down. Enabling grace. Enabling grace. 
Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. I'm taking time to just build this so that um, our understanding can be at the same page so that once we begin to discuss a few things, all of us will be carried along. Philippians 4, 13. It says, I can do all things. How many things? Look at this statement very carefully and tell me if that does not sound like pride. How can a man stand out of the blues and say, I can do all things. Let your mind go wild. You know what all things, positively I mean. All things. Hmm. You know how many things are difficult in this life, in this world? You try healing the sick. You try raising the dead. You try building a house in three months. You try securing favor from systems and structures that are antichrist. And here a man stands and does not care what your, how far your imagination takes you. He dares to tell you, I can do. <laughs> mm. Please pay attention. My teaching begins now. I can do all things. What statement of pride? I can do all things. And yet, you are not omniscient. You are not omnipotent. Are we together now? You are not omnipresent. That means you do not know the future. This was a man who was the arch enemy of everyone who was antichrist. If they saw Paul, remember once upon a time, a people came together and vowed not to eat till Paul died. I don't know what they did later on. Because Paul lived a long time and yet a man stands in the midst of turbulence antagonism and says I can do all things if you make such a statement in our world today your first enemies will be your audience there did you say all things let me give me all the qualifications so that I can use to vet your seriousness did you school in Yale or Harvard number one are you connected to the presidents of nations? And then you say, it does not matter. I can do all things. Look at this statement very carefully because this is going to be the basis of my challenging you tonight. How can a man stand and say, I can do all things? How many things can you do? No, 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 no. Before my teaching, how many things can you do? <laughs> I can do all things. Imagine what will happen to you if you believed this. I can do all things. He's not talking of all negative things. He's not talking of the concept of all things is all things that are in line with my purpose. All things that are in line as far as God's expectation for me is concerned. You get the idea now? I can do all things. That means you have taken away that limitation from your life. That in your mind and in your life, the only limitation to your advancement is the voice of God and process. But as far as mountains are concerned, you have sustained through this spiritual intelligence the ability to not even recognize their presence. I can do all things. Imagine that someone begins to make that statement as a tenant. I can do all things. As a man of God, you've not even started ministry. I can do all things. And you look at the map of the world. You are holding it in your hands. And you look at, you don't even have an international passport. And you can dare say, I can do all things. I can do all things. But he does not stop there. The next statement turns what would have been a statement of pride and arrogance into a message for anybody who intends to go far. He says, I can do all things through Christ. Sali Pakatosia. Which, not who informs, not just who guides, who strengtheneth me, is the Greek word eneges, a strengthening. It says, finally, brethren, Ephesians 6 and verse 10, be strong in the Lord, it says, and in the power of his might. In fact, the amplified rendition, please give it to us, Ephesians 6 and verse 10, it says, draw your power through your union with him. 
Finally, brethren, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Can we have the amplified of this? Is God speaking to someone already? He says, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. That strength which his boundless might provides. I'm using the energy, but it does not come from me. He says, I can do all things. You need to get a powerful revelation tonight. I can do all things. So when you watch a clock moving round non-stop, you would think it's because the mechanical system is so powerful. But behind that beauty, there are usually two or three or four batteries. Is that true? The power that drives that clock is not just in the mechanical system, but that there is a battery. Even if the clock is new, without that battery, it does not move. So he's saying here that I can, when you see the results, you are only seeing the hand of the clock go round and it does not seem to stop. By what energy do you keep going round? He says, I can do all things. Then he says, let me confess, through Christ. Through Christ that strengtheneth me. Through Christ that strengtheneth me. Please sit down. The enabling grace. The enabling grace. We read earlier in 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 5. He says our sufficiency. You know what sufficiency is? Please look at me. Sufficiency means the condition of being adequate. The condition of being adequate. The capacity to rise to the challenge. Paul is saying when you look at me and you look at my history, it is not fair to be commanding the results that I am getting here. He's saying my sufficiency, the capacity, the ability to be adequate. I always seem to match the occasion. He's saying our sufficiency is not of ourselves. In fact, when Jesus, the word incarnate, walked upon the earth, he was not ashamed to say, I can, ah. He says, I can of my own self do nothing. How will Jesus make such a statement of weakness? The word. Our sufficiency is not of ourselves. He says, our sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers of the New Testament that is not after the letter for the letter killeth but the spirit gives life. Is God speaking to someone now? So we are discussing enabling grace and the dynamics of this dimension of grace which is the dimension that is missing in the life of many believers. Most of us have accessed the saving grace because we have acknowledged Jesus as Lord and Savior, but we have not been able to access this enabling grace to tap into the technology that supplies strength, energy, capacity, the grace to move forward. Let me tell you this. This is what has distinguished men into cadres of possibilities in the body of Christ. The ability to access this enabling grace so two or three people can be saved genuinely so and yet the possibilities the results that they command differ it is not necessarily a product of the will of God it is not necessarily a product of one situation being greater than another for one he has found he is tapped into a fountain of endless supply the grace that energizes the grace that enables always rising up to the challenge the quality of being sufficient adequate so when a project comes for instance and you need two billion naira you will see the person standing you size him and there is nothing there except that he will invite you for the dedication and you are looking with all kinds of suspicion something is not fair in this equation you are right but it is called grace. The person comes late for work and that lateness is what makes him to meet his destiny helper the next time. How unfair can that be? 
He came late and while they were about to punish him, here comes his destiny helper and says, I know you somewhere. He said, oh, I'm, I'm about to be queried. And he said, no problem. Let's discuss this issue first. I hear you are in this and that opens another door. Listen, if you understand what I'm teaching you, your life, um, your life will be a mystery first to you and then to many people around you. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Are we together? The quality of being adequate, the capacity to rise up to the challenge. The grace of God. Someone is receiving that dimension of grace. Amen. Now watch this. The grace that brings salvation, what you call, watch this now please. The saving grace. The saving grace does not grow. It is fixed. It only comes by believing and confessing and that is the jurisdiction of that grace. Are we together? The second dimension of grace takes more than believing and confessing. This is where I want, I want you to please understand. Are you getting the difference now? When it has to do with accessing the saving grace, all you need to do is to believe in the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus, Jesus as Savior, Jesus as Lord, and Jesus as King. And then you confess with your mouth, and that grace is administered to you alongside the life of God that comes with it. But when it has to do with the enabling grace, that is the grace that empowers you for a life of exploits and victory, it will take more than just believing. Please watch this. The enabling grace comes and grows through revelation knowledge. Write it down, please. The enabling grace comes and grows through revelation knowledge. As simple as this statement is, it may be the key that explains the frustration and the stagnation of many believers. The enabling grace comes and grows through revelation knowledge. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 2, we read that earlier. Let's read it again. The Bible says grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge. Grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. That means this grace comes and is even multiplied through knowledge, not through desire. I want to be great. Uh -uh, it doesn't work that way. I desire to be great, helpful enough to motivate you, but that will not bring you there. Proverbs 18 and verse 1 says, Through desire a man, having separated himself, he seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. This dimension of grace demands a requisite level of revelation knowledge. Is someone following now? This is very important. Now, it says, let's go back to um, uh, Second Peter now. Second Peter 1 from verse 2. Now we're looking at 3. It says, according as his divine power hath given us all things. How many things? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Again, through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue. Pay attention to verse 4, please. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious. What were we given? We were given promises, not just realities. Do you know what a promise is? A promise is a, is a commitment that is activated by fulfilling conditions. Look at what the Bible says we're giving. We were given exceeding great and precious promises. Let me give you an example of such promises. That it shall come to pass, Deuteronomy 28, 1, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all his commands that I command you this day, it says that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth, not some, all the nations of the earth and that this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you exceeding great and precious promises that no weapon that is fashioned against you will prosper and that every tongue that rises up against you will fall in judgment exceeding great and precious promises that the path of the just 
is as a shining light, shining ever brighter, even unto the perfect day. Is someone listening now? That when men say there is a casting down, regardless the situation for you, it will be that there is a lifting up. I'm telling you what you were given, that you were given exceeding great and precious promises. It is only when those promises are activated in your life, they prove that in reality you are a partaker of that divine nature. If we don't see these promises working in your life, you will not look like a child of God. That is what he's saying. It is in the presence of these realities activated that you validate the reality of your divine nature. So if I look at your life as an attestation to the fact that the divine life is working in you, I begin to search for a manifestation of these great and exceeding precious promises. I search for favor. I search for speed. Are we together now? Don't tell me it's because I'm in Abuja. No. We were given these great and exceeding precious promises. Is someone understanding now? You need to know what God gave you. This is what we were given. I like the word promises. Promises. I give you a million naira check. Promises. You have a responsibility to transact with that promise until it becomes cash. Are you, are you learning now? You can keep a check of 100 million naira or 100 million dollars and be dying of hunger it does not stop me from being a giver i gave you you cannot blame me for that situation as far as my giving is concerned the check is proof but it is a promise a promise demands that there are conditions to activate it please listen believers hear me great people hear me having dreams and visions of you having a great life does not automatically translate to a life of victory you were given great exceeding great and precious promises apostle you don't know my background the gift still is unto you he said for the promise is unto you and unto your children is that in your bible your children's children as many as are afar off even as many as the lord will call please listen very carefully exceeding great and precious promises we have been celebrating the promises forever and yet we have not been able to understand the spiritual technology of transacting these promises to now appear in our lives. Huh. The Bible says the word became flesh. The word became there is, is, is like corn becoming corn flour or lemon becoming lemonade. Something happened. You did not just plug lemon on a tree and then it just squeezed out lemonade. No become is someone learning now no matter what you go through even if you live a defeated life it does not change the scripture that you have been given exceeding great and precious promises it is true today over the most anointed person and it is true today over the worst sinner if there is any uh, expression like that because the same Lord is rich unto all. He has given us exceeding great and precious promises. And the Bible says that by these, by the manifestation of these promises in our lives, how do you say that God is with a man? At Nicodemus, he came to Jesus by night, John chapter 3, and said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except there are some things that show that God is with you. Take it higher for me, please. If you do not carry certain results, we have a right to vet the reality. Don't say it does not matter. The Bible says that by these, ye might be partakers. That means something about your results should be a Bible study manual. 
that something about the workings of the spirit in your life should compel someone who would ordinarily not pay attention to God and say, what is this that God is doing with a man? We are not talking of pride. We are not talking of competition. The effulgence of the glory of God through the life of men. He said, oh, that men would praise the Lord, Reverend Sam. He said, for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Exceeding great promises. This is beyond just prospering financially. Dimensions of the anointing. The grace that can keep nations to their knees for Jesus. So do not ask how your pastor right from a studio would be able to minister to people and the Bible says by these promises. Before Reverend Sam started, that promise was there. It took a consciousness to say, I need to activate something. Ah. Only God knows what else is there. And while your lifetime is reading like a meter, heaven is saying, why, why are you short-circuiting the many things that you need to do? This life that I have is the life of God in me. This life that I have is the life. This life that I have is the life of Christ in me. This life that I have is the life. Hear me. You want to activate the operation of enabling grace? Your first assignment is to know the promises. Forget about how to activate them. You need to know what is there first. Ali Barato Skiata. And now, brethren, Acts 20, 32. I commend you to God, then to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. And when you are now built up capacity, it gives you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. That means among those who are sanctified, not everybody will walk in that inheritance. Is someone learning? These are the things I read. And I read them from one room. I believe them. I believe them. That when God said you will be exalted above all the nations of the earth, I believed him. I did not know that knowledge was transiting me to a dimension where I was activating the supply. You see, one day God opened my eyes. I think I may have shared it or you may have heard it in my teachings. Reverend Sam, I had a vision and I saw a giant gate and I saw doors. You know how post office boxes are? It was opening and closing. And on every door, there were scriptures written. And the moment the small door opens, light will come from it. And I was wondering, and the Spirit of the Lord began to tell me that every dimension, every truth of the Bible has a grace component that comes upon you to defend that scripture with your life. Are we together now? When you truly catch the revelation, the light there, that means the grace component will come upon you. That means everything you claim to know and you do not have the grace to defend its validity with your life has not become a revelation to you. This is powerful. So when I learned that I'm not in a hurry to say I know, I use the appearance of the grace component of that revelation to validate that it has come. There are many things we claim to know in the body of Christ. But when we search for the energizing that empowers you to defend that revelation, it is not there. So we call God names that have no proof in our life. Oh, you are Jaira. Where is the supply? Every time you call God before the nations, you attract their attention to you. Make sure you do not misrepresent him with your results. So before you shout Jaira to the nations, 
call him in your room verify that you know what happened in the burning bush that's why God told Moses I'm not going to allow you embarrass and disgrace me let's do this at the, at the burning bush a sample of the miracles you are going to be showing Pharaoh throw the rod pick it by the tail and he said now you can go when he stood before Pharaoh he was not trying he came with grace backing him listen you cannot call the world to come and celebrate Jesus in your life while you are still trying to understand the ropes around this thing. While growth remains ever increasing, mastery is a reality in this kingdom. He said, he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. Is someone learning? So, he has given us exceeding, my apologies for leaving this on the screen, but this is powerful. I want you to see it. Exceeding great and precious promises. Did you know, Reverend Sam, many of the miracles we think God uniquely brought to others was already there for everyone. There are few miracles we celebrate in the lives of people that was uniquely channeled to them. These are possibilities that are left in the spirit. If someone buys a land today and builds an estate, it will look as though the federal government kept the land for him. No, it's been there. It's the one who saw it and paid for it and built on it that becomes the owner. Are we together? Yes. I believe what I'm telling you with all my heart. Exceeding great and precious promises. So your first assignment, please sit down, please sit down. Your first assignment now, remember what you are dealing with, lifted by grace. You want to understand the dynamics of the supply of grace, that when it has to do with the enabling grace, it is revelation dependent, not desire dependent. Many believers keep wishing in their desire or keep complaining in their absence of results. Why are things like this in my life? That is not the seed for the abundance of grace. Grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge. Not your knowledge, the knowledge. It's your assignment to find out what knowledge controls prosperity. What knowledge controls lifting. The grace for prosperity does not come until the knowledge for prosperity comes. The grace for influence never comes until the knowledge for influence comes. I want everybody to hear my voice. So how are you going to go about it? I will tell them to hear me. No. Hear ye him is a grace that is supported by a kind of knowledge. Knowledge number one. If I be lifted from the earth, I will draw all men. Do you know that? Otherwise it becomes a risk for God to draw men. You need to know the kind of man God draws to you first. Find out the kind of man God drew to David. There were men who were in debt. There were men who were distressed. Wicked people all together. Are you ready for that kind of attraction? When you do not know what to do with them? No. The mighty men you are calling do not come as mighty men. They come as weak men. Then the knowledge you have now turns them to mighty men. I was very touched hearing the story, I believe, that is a lady in the church. Hearing there's nothing more powerful. It's called the transforming church. You know what that means? That means you come as you are, but it's against the mandate to stay as you are. That means, listen, the body of knowledge God has given his servant has a grace for transformation, but that grace is not it does not come until you submerge yourself. There is a body of truth, doctrinally speaking. If you do not know, you will not carry the grace. Listen, look at the ratio of impartation to teaching. Three years to one night. Please sit down. Look at the ministry of Jesus. The ratio of impartation to teaching. For one encounter 
on the day of Pentecost. It took three years plus 40 extra days. When he resurrected, he did not even have time to celebrate it. Returned from heaven and said, gentlemen, go back, let's discuss. In 50 days, the Holy Ghost is coming. There are still some things I've not taught you. And the Bible says he spent 40 days teaching them the matters of the kingdom. As powerful as impartation is, the value of impartation is when it comes upon a vessel that has knowledge. The potential of impartation is released. That is why impartation in ignorance can easily delve into witchcraft and extra biblical practices because there is no knowledge to define the coordinates of the administration of the anointing. Is someone learning tonight? Knowledge. Jesus is never called the prayer of God. Jesus is never called the fasting of God. Jesus is called the wisdom of God. Jesus is called the word of God. All these activities I mentioned were richly captured in his life. Yet he refused to be named after them. He could name his house the house of prayer. But he named himself the word. The compendium. The logos of God. Are we together now? The Bible says, has thou not heard, has thou not known? The everlasting God, the Lord, he says he does, he does not, um, he is not weary. The, and then he says, there is no searching of his understanding. It is that understanding that grants him the capacity to not be weak. When you say God is not weak, it's because there is a vast body of knowledge that forbids him from limitation. Grace and peace be multiplied through knowledge. So here's how it works. Your first assignment in activating the supply of the enabling grace is to understand methodically these exceeding great and precious promises. My question for you is do you know them? Because you see, you are not saved by works, but you are saved unto good works. Are we together now? The purpose of the investment of God's grace upon your life is that you would produce results according to John 15 and verse 8. He says, Herein is my Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. John 15, 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide or remain. Most believers have celebrated ignorance or have random their approach to acquiring spiritual knowledge. Please look up. Their approach to acquiring spiritual knowledge is rather random, sir. If they stumble across a message that profits them, fine and good. If they so happen to meander around a conference, fine and good. There is no staying methodically to be taught line upon line, precepts upon precepts. The absence of methodical mentorship is why there are gaps in the spiritual understanding of many believers. Hence, the absence of grace. So people know something small about favor. They know something small about speed. They know something small about help. They know something small about prayer. They know something small about fasting. And all of those knowledge, they, they are important, but they are insufficient to produce anything potent spiritually. Grace and peace. Have I lost you tonight? Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge according as his divine power the bible says hath given us all things right but it says through knowledge through knowledge through knowledge psalm 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of cause verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you how many of you all of you are children of the Most High. Remember, Jesus made reference to this scripture. Verse 7 says, but you shall die like mere men. So, the absence of spiritual knowledge, exact knowledge, reduces a man with godlike capacity to become a mere man. 
the Bible says an heir for as long as that heir is a child that he differed not from a slave. What does that mean? The experience of that one even though a legitimate beneficiary of the inheritance will not be different from a slave. Is someone learning? So the Bible is very, very clear as to the fact that God made a commitment that is connected to conditions. So the first assignment is to know those promises. What has God said concerning me? The Bible calls them exceeding great and precious promises. My sister, listen to me. My brother, listen to me. It does not matter what your background is. Whilst it is profitable to be inspired with those you think have gone, that God seems to help, let me bring you good news that the same Lord is rich unto all. In as much as there are disparities as far as the election of grace is concerned, everybody in Christ, Bishop Oyedeko will say, has a high calling. There are no low callings in Christ. By reason of the election of grace, we may have certain duties, certain offices that may seem to look higher than others. But let me tell you the truth. Everybody can make maximum kingdom impact with their lives. If only you know how to tap into the supply of this mysterious supply of the spirit. All blessings that we call grace. A gentleman was about to start ministry and he sent me a text. I believe he was sincere. And he sent me a text and demanded an amount as what he felt would be support. I, I don't even know the person. And I don't want to tell you how much. Um, it's, it's a very disturbing amount. Hundreds of millions. And he said he doesn't know, you know, if this can happen. <laughs> and I said this man already that is an exam he wrote and failed by himself by that email it is it is proof that he should not even go near the corridors of ministry he should quickly go and find someone who will help him if it this kind of understanding you want to be a shepherd you will kill your members from day one the worst the, the most hit one will be the first member who comes are we together? Now, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just saying, look at the kind of understanding. And this guy is, expects the, the grace. You see that it is unfair to want a certain level of grace without the requisite level of understanding. Hallelujah. The enabling grace so what is the key to accessing this grace the key is to access high level spiritual illumination backed up by a life of prayer and fellowship with the Holy Spirit please listen I'm giving you a very powerful key now the key that releases an individual into abundance of grace if you want to call it great grace if you want to call it ever increasing grace if you want to call it is high level spiritual illumination high level spiritual illumination Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 18 high level spiritual illumination that is backed up by a life of prayer and fellowship with the spirit it says the eyes of your understanding please give us amplify the eyes of your understanding it says being flooded with light flooded with light how many of you have gone into a stadium in the night have you gone for a crusade or any activity in the stadium if you were blindfolded and they opened your eye in the night and you didn't have the chance to look up you would never even know that it was night because of the high level. They are called floodlights. It is night right now. And if we cover all the windows 
and just leave you, maybe cover all the windows, anything that can lead you outside. Because of the light here, you will still think he were dead. Listen to me. If you really want to walk in power and all the dimensions of the grace of God, I give you a, an irrefutable key. Number one, high level spiritual illumination. You must know what the exceeding and precious promises are and then you must find out how they operate. See, knowing the promise is one part of your understanding but you must know how to release the supply to your life. Most people do not know the promises. Others know the promises but they do not know how to release it to their lives. This is why God puts conferences like this. So that there are moments where you come with the word and speaker after speaker are we together now? They come and with sound exegesis of the word, they open you to various dimensions that help you access these exceeding precious promises. The eyes of your understanding. What version is this? Being enlightened. Let's go to Amplified again. That you may know the hope of your calling. Thank you. And he says, to which he has called you and the riches of his glorious inheritance. Where? In the saints. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Apostle. I'm in a state right now where this teaching has opened me up to gross spiritual ignorance. I can say of a truth that I have not found this enabling grace working in my life. Where do I start from? It starts with a decision. That I'm going to commit myself this year to be in pursuit of light. I'm going to cut away from vain activities that only distract and flatter and pursue substance as far as my destiny is concerned. Seeing then that my exploits are grace dependent and that this grace is knowledge dependent, my passion for that grace must be expressed through my passion for knowledge. Structured knowledge that works because the Bible says, listen carefully, it says that was the true light. That means there are false lights. They carry a semblance of results and you waste your time around them only to find out that they cannot translate to the profiting of your destiny. In fact, the Bible says it this way. Paul mentoring his son in the gospel. He says, meditate on these things. He says, give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear unto how many? All. I made up my mind like never before that I will put myself in the position of a student who does not know anything because first Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 says let him that thinks he knows anything it says that he should know that he does not know anything yet as he ought to know so I challenge myself I thank God for what God is doing but there is a benchmark. It says this one thing I do. Is that in your Bible? Forgetting the things that are behind. It didn't say forgetting bad things. Forgetting the things that are behind. It says I press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. I press. I press. I press. Study. Study. 
the Bible says to follow them who through faith and patience have obtained. Do you know that what you are calling your future is already somebody's reality? There are people who by reason of the investment of the spirit, they have toured this earth. I'm telling you, they have tamed life like an animal. There are some them you can follow. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you And I will never settle for less I know there's more that's found in you Listen, the moment you start settling I am better than my relatives in the village You have pegged yourself at a level You see, the character of champions is that they never see the finish line it is only the spectators that see the finish line. A champion has lost the ability to see the finish line. When coaches train champions, they extend the finish line by several meters beyond the actual finish line so that psychologically they peg themselves at a higher standard and they are surprised on the day of competition that they finished because their mind still believes they should go further. Let me challenge someone here. It is too early to start clapping for yourself. I celebrate what you have started doing, but if your pastor, your man of God, the prophet over your life is still with energy and passion driving, you don't rest on the second day. You rest on the seventh day. Some of you are already resting even before the seventh, the seventh day. Apostle, I went to my small fellowship. Oh, Apostle, I was invited for a fellowship and my goodness, the word was so powerful. Who marked you? By what parameters did you vex that meeting? In an exam where the highest students got 7%, if you are given an award for first position, he's the one who will get it. He still failed but he failed the highest. If you now categorize people into a great system of F, uh, what they call it, E down to A, all the people bought the first position and the one who didn't write the exam will be in one category. Be careful who is clapping for you. Now, I'm not saying don't, don't enjoy. There are times to pat yourself at the back. But let me tell you, there is, there is the spirit of mediocrity that has stopped many people from accessing grace. Arriving too early, celebrating over nothing. We are talking of days where you will keep nations still for Jesus. I minimize my hearing and my seeing of anything that is able to distract me. No. It is a formula that has worked powerfully for me. If I hear you clapping from afar, I tell you God bless you from afar and let's get to work. For as long as there is somebody not healed, for as long as sick people come, 500 of them and two are healed, we give God glory, but that's not the best. Come on. one house and you're about to sleep what if God says so it you are not there mm, you are not there you are not there stop arriving too early you're not there this is a prophetic word for someone don't say I am better than my relatives we're talking about the nations we're talking about revealing Jesus to nations and territories let me find somewhere to tie up my teaching so we pray hmm. high level spiritual illumination write this down please backed up by a life of prayer and fellowship with the spirit 2nd Corinthians 13 14 2nd Corinthians 13 14 hmm. let me prophesy to someone you don't have to stand no, I have seen 
No ear has heard what God has prepared for you. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. The week you came for this conference, be patient. Something is happening that you are not yet seeing. We have been trained to celebrate success by external parameters, but it happens within out. You are the transforming church. The Holy Ghost is breathing upon you and doing something upon your spirit, man. I know no one has risen in your family. I know they have concluded that nobody can, any, can ever rise. Can anything good come out of Nazareth, Nathaniel said? Listen, it was not Nathaniel's fault. He was not lying. Find out how many Nazarenes died shamelessly in the Bible. He knew what he was saying. Find out about Samson, that they rise and fall. And he said, Jesus, we know that you are just a balloon that will rise up and not last. And Jesus said, I may not seem to last, but mine is not weakness, it's for a cause. Nathaniel said, can anything good come? We have studied you. There is a pattern that surrounds your life. There are many of you, whilst you are here sitting or standing, it's like there is a voice that is speaking to you. Will the nations ever celebrate Jesus upon this life? You don't have to be in ministry. As it were, fivefold. The grace of God. Neither do men light a lamp. The key word is light the lamp. If the lamp does not have fire, it can be thrown anywhere. But the moment light comes, it says you cannot hide it. It will burn everything under until it gives light. He said in that simile to let your light so shine. Someone prophesy, so shine. Say it to yourself, so shine. So shine. So shine. So shine. Beyond Abuja, beyond Nigeria. So shine. So shine for his glory, for his majesty. Now listen please. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you see the word grace there? The next word we see there is love. The third word we see there is communion. They coexist. Grace, love, fellowship. That you access grace by contending for high level spiritual illumination backed up by a life of prayer if you have a problem of prayer in this church you are not genuinely connected I submit to you sincerely and truthfully because it says ye are all partakers of my grace there is an abundance of grace that can shake away prayer laxity if only you have the discernment to tap into it and fellowship with the spirit let me tell you this the secret of being visible is to be hidden you see when you can learn to hide in his presence it will compel the nations to look for you where did I find that scripture give us Mark chapter 1 please from verse 35 let me show you the formula for visibility Mark 1 35 we're reading to 37 the Bible says after Jesus finished all his crusades mighty works in righteousness the Bible says and in the morning rising up a great while before days that in your Bible he went out and departed into a noisy place into a market square a solitary place and there pray what was the result Simon and they that were with him followed him may this be your testimony verse 37 read with me and when they had found him they said unto him all men seek for thee all men seek for the one who is hiding to pray all men seek for the one who is hiding to study all men seek for the one who is hiding to rise in light all men seek for the one who is hiding to know they do not seek for the ignorant they do not seek for the proud they do not seek for the valueless you must contend for high level spiritual illumination listen 
many of us, the end of this conference should be the start of your retreat. You should go back and say, Lord, we have to flog out this issue of destiny. I am tired of an average life. There is an abundance of grace that can rest upon me. I'm tired of people suspecting me as though you did not call me. Hear me. It is one thing to be called. But Apostle Paul encourages us. He says, give diligence to these things to make your calling and your election sure. That means it is your responsibility to stop people from doubting the validity of your call. Jesus, a man approved by miracles, signs, wonders. Apostle God has called me into the financial realm. Congratulations. We will give you some time. And if we don't see a seed, we have a right to say, listen, faith is not foolishness. If it is not working, go and seek for true light. Are we together? Yes. You have tolerated ignorance in your life too much. You have gauged your success by poor and wrong parameters. And you have accredited yourself where you should be challenging yourself to rise. It is amazing that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father and he's still making intercession. As though what he did were not finished. That is the spirit of a champion. Having said it is finished, Paul at the zenith of his apostolic ministry, he said, this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press. Looking unto Jesus, he said, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, is that in your Bible, that he endured the cross and he despised the shame. I made up my mind that for as long as I am alive, nothing will hinder my pressing. I will learn I will grow, I will build, I will stretch, I will challenge myself. It was Bishop Abioye who said, how am I stretched? Stretching does not kill. He said, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. You are a business owner here. Throw it. The time you use for jealousy and pitying yourself is the same energy you would need to invest yourself in superior knowledge. Knowledge is like a lift. It can lift you. In certain nations of the world, there are buildings that are up to 200 stories and in a matter of minutes, the lift is at such tremendous speed, sometimes you don't even know you are rising. You just know you started and it's gotten there. Your life may look like you are, you don't even, you see the thing with mastery is sometimes it's so effortless, you are not even aware how fast you are going. Except that thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph from one level of results, one, one dimension of exploit to the other. Hallelujah. The key again, I repeat as we prepare to pray, high level spiritual illumination. Go and write the various aspects of your life where you have not seen the grace of God speaking. Be very sincere with yourself. I have seen that there is no favor in my life. It's, this is not negative confession. This is acknowledging what is there so you can deal with it. Two of you can be walking as friends. They will greet and bless one person and leave you. And the person who blessed him knows you more. It tells you that thing is not working. When, listen, when Samuel met with Saul, Saul told him by reason of what has come upon you, you will be returning back and you will see three men holding two loaves of bread. They will salute you and give to you. You think people just give? No. Thou anointest my head with oil. I see what is on my head by looking at my cup. If my cup is empty, don't blame the cup. The cup is a report card that there is nothing on your head. Hallelujah. If there are 10 people to be favored in this room, I will start praying for the remaining nine. Because one position has been occupied for sure. You see, let me tell you something about knowledge. Knowledge gives you stability. The Bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times.
Are we together now? It's time for us to settle down. Some of you need to go and get Reverend Sam's teaching and get all of the teachings you can find and settle down. And now begin to listen. Don't say I was there when he preached it. Is the result speaking? If the answer is no, go back again. Are we together? Oh, I read Papa Hagin's book. What was on him? Is it on you now? Read again. I prophesied as I was commanded. I saw some results. And he said, prophesy again. Again is a powerful word. It is the press for perfection. Again. I fasted, but I can fast again. I studied, but I can study again. I was serious with God and later became unserious. I can be serious again. For someone, this is your prophetic word tonight. Again. God is saying, go back again. Go back again. Go back again. Halisha li karusia tabarada. Go back. The same way it was while you were with him on campus. I'm saying this prophetically. God is saying there was something you and me did while you were on campus. As soon as you came out, the vicissitudes of life have eroded your passion, eroded your prayer life, eroded your work with God. Some of these before you started making money. And that word again, like the hair of Samson, God is calling you. Void yourself of these distractions. And return to the place where you can say again. Man of God, the prophetic word you saw for the nations that you are a prophet, you saw it 10 years ago, till now it has not spoken because the grace, please help them. We'll spend the last few minutes and I'll just pray for you, but just help them. I just sense that there is a shift in the atmosphere. The anointing that is shifting in the atmosphere is an anointing that is bringing stability back. There are people's lives that are, it's, it's like a reed before the wind. Please hear me. Listen very carefully. We're about to pray. Please be sensitive now. Spiritual illumination backed up by a life of intense prayer and fellowship with the secret is the key to ever increasing grace the abundance of grace please bring the gentleman that shouts now under the anointing as i mentioned abundance of grace i just saw the word prophet and i saw light on someone a gentleman i don't know who that person is please when you find him bring him we're going to pray just a few minutes shadow of your wings your influence is all over me I am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me the part of the song I like. I am victorious. I have overcome. I am victorious. Ali, Ali, yo. Ali, yo. Ali, yo. Ali, Ali, yo. Oh, 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 Ali, Ali, yo, oh. Ali, yo, oh, 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 oh. Ali, Ali, yo. Oh. Man of God, go and find out what is the key to church growth. Don't argue it. Results are exact in the spirit. Go and find out. What has God placed upon his servant? The secrets of men are contained in their words. You know God by knowing his word. So you know men by studying their words. Their speakings are a revelation of their mindset, their understanding. You may not have the liberty for close proximity, but you can draw close to their minds using the vista of their words. Settle down. 
Find the area in your life that is not working and invest in light. Back it up with prayer. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2 and verse 42, it says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayer. Acts chapter 4 and verse 33, and now we pray and I wrap up. The Bible says, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection and great grace was upon how many? That means all of us can carry great grace. Great power comes with great grace. Great grace comes with great knowledge. Great grace was upon them all. Listen, the quality of your witness in this end time depends on the level of unction and enabling grace that you carry, which is a product of the time you have invested in the study of the word. High level spiritual illumination, intense moments of prayer, and fellowship with the spirit nothing else will replace these keys whether you want to be an extraordinary ceo an exceptional man of god you want to become an exceptional father mother leader the formula is the same you cannot ignore the word of god ignore the ministry of prayer and fellowship with the spirit one communication of the spirit in the place of fellowship can equal the next 20 years of relevance in your life. Listen, we have gotten to times in the church age where depending on the intellect alone or over dependence I would say on the intellect will prove to be costly in the days that come. Because let me tell you the truth. There are trajectories we are about to tour that no man can claim to have had the experience. Not within this dispensation. You would have to be three, four hundred years old to tell us I've seen this before. Everybody who saw that cyclical move has gone. So we are infants relative to the moves coming. You need to depend on the ancient of days. There is a fountain of wisdom you must tap in the place of fellowship. Only God will tell you what the next ten years of ministry will be. Reverend Sam spoke about my teaching so graciously and I'm so grateful for that. But let me tell you, as at the time God instructed me to start putting teachings online, internet was just in its infancy within the African soil. And the Lord spoke to me, we, if, I think Facebook just started or so, and he told me, he said, put these teachings. Quality of production, very poor, was not, I mean, sometimes you would have to stretch to listen to some of the audios. And he said, put it online and my angel will take it to the ends of the earth. Have you had God for 2023 20, till 2033? Has he spoken to you? Don't assume it to be business as usual. COVID has taught us the, the, the excellency of staying with the spirit to navigate the ever-changing world that we live in. Billionaires fell to nothing within one year because of over-dependence on the flesh. Proverbs 3, 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, it says, and lean not on your own understanding. The next verse says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. I love verse 7. It says, be not wise in your own eyes. It says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. You can be wise in your eyes. Hallelujah. Great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection and great grace. You are lifted by grace when you are lifted through knowledge. You are lifted by grace when you are lifted through high level illumination. Listen, there is no amount of darkness you will confront in this life that does not have a light component to drive it away. John 1 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not is someone ready to pray I plead for a few minutes just a few minutes so that we can just cap this and 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 take some moments to pray don't allow this year not after this Gilgal experience don't allow this year listen let me tell you regardless the prophetic word every year remains like the previous year until you engage
until you engage. Remember this word, exceeding precious promises. Commitments bound by conditions, bound to conditions. Cain and Abel went to offer sacrifices. One walked in keeping with the patterns. Abel, his sacrifice was accepted. Cain compromised on the pattern and his sacrifice was not accepted. He was angry and God said, why are you wrought? If you had done it, will you not be accepted? The same Lord is rich unto all. What has God done to the sister you said in your church here or another person and it looks like he's not done it to you? For others, it's a matter of time like your pastor has said. Haven't done all to stand, you just stand and wait with patience until it comes. But for others, you are waiting in vain because you have not even done anything. Waiting for a harvest over a seed you have not sown is fraud. So you need to ask yourself, have I sown? Don't just say I'm expecting a harvest. The danger is that it's time that will reveal both, whether you have sown well or not. I made up my mind as a commitment. I started this from my time of retreat. I made up my mind that I would, be, I would press and stretch myself, not from a competitive standpoint, but that there are heights, virgin dimensions in the spirit we must press and we must touch. As I study God's generals and these people, my goodness, this is child's play relative to the levels of the grace that these people touched. Dimensions that makes you a blessing to nations. I vowed a vow in the name of Jesus that I would never stand on any man's pulpit and preach rubbish and waste their time and they just clap and say, show him the way. No, no, no. There are souls to be saved. There are lives to be transformed. For some people, that is the last sermon. That sermon represents the last, the last string of mercy they have for their deliverance. My life must change. My life must change Cause I've touched your grace I've touched your grace My life must change My life must change I've touched your grace I've touched your grace you will never be the same you've touched this grace your life must change I'd like you to begin to thank God for this teaching tonight everywhere while you're standing. I saw several people outside the overflows and those who are following from across the globe. Now is the point where you press. Come on, this is a church of prayer. This is a place of prayer. Is someone praying? Salaga brekato shalaka prande gebalato siata. Sabra teska belaga barato shalika prande gebalato. Sala sabas kabarato shabrande geba. Just a minute or two to press. Aliga barato siata. Mark eleven twenty four. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, when ye pray, when ye pray. Man of God, pray. Businessman, pray. Captain of industry, pray. Mother, father, pray. It's a new season. There is an abundance of grace that God is bringing to the body of Christ. But the grace follows after abundance of knowledge, high-level spiritual illumination. Obtain grace to press for knowledge. Obtain grace to press for knowledge. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. 
not, you're going to cry. Listen carefully. It says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion, it's the word koinonia, the fellowship, the sharing together. You see, it's important for you to pray, obtain grace to stay with the word until light comes. Isaiah 61 and 2 amplified says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. Shine for your light is come. You don't arise and shine because you are tired of sitting. You arise and shine because your light is come. Not because your light is around. It's been around since 2015 for someone. But it has not come to you. May this be the year that it comes. Are you ready to pray? I obtain grace. Someone pray. Open up your mouth and pray. Grace to contend for superior light. The Bible says that he made many lights. But there were two great lights. One to rule the day and the other to rule the night. And then he made the stars also. Go ahead and pray. The light that empowers me to rule the day. The light that empowers me to rule the night. I obtain, I obtain. By diligent study. I, Daniel, understood by books. I, Daniel, understood by books. Someone pray. I obtain grace to be a student of scripture. I obtain grace to be disciplined towards my press for light. Definite light. Marvelous light. Light that illuminates every darkness in my life. I obtain grace to invest in prayer. Someone is praying. I obtain grace to invest in prayer. But we will give ourselves continually. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. We will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. nations are calling for the mantle God has put upon your life. Man of God, the nations are calling for the grace he has put upon you. Oh Esther, oh Ruth, oh Deborah, oh Elijah, the nations are calling. Hallelujah. brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine from dark in my life you are brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine from dark prophesy one time upon your life you are brooding now spare me a minute I want you to pray every grace you have seen at work in the life of your man of God I stand in faith with you I want you to place a demand upon it right now by reason of being grafted to this spiritual tribe him and his wife, the grace, the years of sacrifice in the spirit. I'm releasing my faith with you. Pray, what have you seen work in his life? What have you seen God do in this church? Is someone praying? Don't let pride keep you in that position. What have you seen God do in his life? Father, you have lifted him. Let that grace come upon me. Are you praying? The Lord who took him from the city of Azare in Bauchi and lifted him to become a voice across the nations. Lord, you can lift me right where I am. From where thou art, he says, lift up your eyes. 
Someone is placing a demand. And all of you who are connected to his prayer platform, there is a chance to pray all across the globe, placing a demand upon the grace that God has put on his life. Father, I obtain the grace for vibrancy in prayer. I obtain the grace to understand the capacity to understand scripture. Grace for fellowship with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. 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 There is the abundance of grace that a man can have. I stretch my hands now. Something is going to fall right now. Just in one minute. I come as one sent in the name of the Lord. I want you to receive this with all your heart. You will be surprised what will happen to you. In the name of Jesus. Father, you have sent me here not only to preach, but to impart. I stretch my hands right now. Let that fire, that grace. Oh, speak from your heavens and the earth will sing. Oh, speak from the heavens now he from the earth. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear my altar is calling you oh God my sacrifice is calling you oh God let the grace for visibility the grace that can cause a territory that hear ye him anointing in the name of Jesus, I impart that grace upon you now. Receive that pakatoske tepata. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Visibility in ministry. Visibility in your family. From where you are, rise and let the nation see Jesus from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Every delay in your life, whatever has tied you in the same position, there are two systems of advantage that are given by God to men to redeem time. Number one is restoration. Number two is speed. I call upon these twofold graces. May they rest upon your life now. Receive restoration. Receive speed. Receive restoration. Receive speed. Receive restoration. Receive speed. Hallelujah. Your pastor is a blessed man. God has shown him mercy. I want to stand in faith with him and speak. Can I tell you the truth? Believe me when I tell you, if you are not empowered economically, you will never be able to be an effective witness. The name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. If you will lift it with integrity. Did you hear what I said? The name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes resources to lift it high enough for the nations to see. God who has helped this precious man and his wife. I'm standing in faith. Listen, if you believe in this prayer, I'm praying for you. Many of you have been in this city, a land of plenty, but the two leap gates has been closed over your hands. I pray for you by the grace that helps men even financially. Between now and the next three months, I stand by the grace and the oil of this call. I declare, may my God surprise you. May my God surprise you. May my God surprise you. Access to favor, uncommon kindness, uncommon access, uncommon acceptance. Hallelujah. Many of you hear me. You are in this church. 
but you are not genuinely connected to the anointing. Genuinely connected. Jesus said, all that you have given me, I have kept. We only keep what we are given that stays as though he says except the son of perdition he had to explain why Judas let me tell you spiritual fatherhood is a responsibility you account for those God gave you and there are many of you that are sincerely genuinely not connected you connect through honor you connect through giving you connect through your prayer you connect by supporting what it is the dimension of God committed to the man that God has given you are we together? I don't know what has mocked God in your life, but in the name of Jesus, it ends now. It ends now. It ends now. It ends now. Therefore, by the privilege of God's grace, standing on all the graces that have ministered here and the graces that will be coming, and then the grace upon this precious man and his wife, in the name of Jesus Christ, I move you, move to the next level. Move to the next level spiritually. Move to the next level spiritually. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are here and you are saying, Apostle, I've heard everything you have said, but I confess before Jesus and before his people, I cannot say for sure I have accessed even the saving grace. You cannot get the enabling grace until you have received the saving grace. The administration of the enabling grace is for those who are in Christ. Remember, in our teaching of grace, we said it is all spiritual blessings that are routed through the office of Christ. Now listen very carefully. Before Jesus returns, there will be a harvest. Mighty evangelical voices across the globe have been prophesying this. I have seen it many times in my visions, even in recent times, that there is a prophetic harvest, a harvest like never before, because this gospel of the kingdom must be preached as a witness to the ends of the earth, and then the end will come. So there is an abundant supply of grace and of the spirit, enabling as many who have taken God seriously to be able to frontier the course of the kingdom across the nations. Please hear me. There are people here who are saying, Apostle, Reverend Sam, I cannot truly say that I am saved. And for others you are saying, well, I remember making this decision, but truly, I cannot say as at now that my relationship with Jesus is intact. You may be inside, you may be outside the overflow, or you may be across the globe. I understand there are people watching from across the continents of the earth, wherever you are watching by television, perhaps even by a rebroadcast. Jesus Christ is speaking to you right now. This is my last function here. I'm going to call on all of those who are making this decision right where you are. If I plead that you just clear the way, please, for them. I'm going to count one to five, and I want you with boldness to come and stand before Jesus here. Please just stand, make sure they don't interrupt the man of God. Whether you are rededicating your life to Jesus or making this, I'm just looking for one sincere person who is saying there is no pretense, I came to church. You are inside, those coming from outside, if it's for salvation, please let them come. I'm counting one to five now, run to Jesus. Run to Jesus. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Run to Jesus. Please don't kneel. Stand for the sake of space so that others can come. God's people, is this the best you can do as you celebrate them? He has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Come. Come.
Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this bold decision. And those who are connecting again by way of television, the internet, as I lead these precious ones to pray, make sure you pray. I believe an email or um, something will be projected from, you from the screen and then you would see a link or an information to just let the church know that you made Jesus Lord of your life and then to connect you to the prayer platform for your spiritual nourishment. Hallelujah. All of you who have come, I salute you for making this most noble decision. This is the noblest decision that any man can make on this side of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. No matter how bad things are, it doesn't matter what yesterday was, he's able to give you a new beginning. May I request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender to Jesus. Go ahead, high above your head. Please say this after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight... I have heard your word. I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe you rose again for my justification. Right now, I make Jesus my savior, my Lord, and my king. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i declare that i'm a child of god i go forward ever and backward never in jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you so much for this hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.